The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. I'm Werner Tobin back on the Corn School today down here on tractor catching up with Turner Sanford. We're going to do part two of our planter series uh, for the spring. Um, Turner, uh, you get a lot of calls. We sure do. In the spring uh, from growers. You know, we try to get ourselves set to roll, but sometimes it doesn't work out so well. Uh, we've got some challenges. You know, what are some of the typical calls you get? Right. Uh, so when I think about our top five customer calls, uh, one would be, you know, my CCS hoses are plugging. Mm. My seed's not flowing. Uh, I've got row units that are overpopulating or underpopulating. Another one is a speed source error. Yeah. Uh, and even more specifically, when we have, say, a green planter matched with a not green tractor, we, we run into that. Um, quite a bit uh, and then as we get later on into the season crop changeover that's always something that we we want to make sure that we're doing right uh, we do get uh, we get more than a handful of calls about crop changeover yeah well I'll tell you what we're gonna do a preemptive strike here we're gonna answer these questions right here and right now uh, on the corn school what do you want to start with we'll start with our CCS hoses are plugging alrighty so we're hanging out underneath our CCS tanks which stand for central commodity system this is going to be the bulk seed storage on our planter. Now, our CCS system consists of a few different components. Obviously, we've got our big yellow tanks. That's where our seed's going to be stored. We've got a manifold down here that have hoses that run to, they've got their own specific row unit that they're going to be uh, assigned to. And then we've got a big fan at the back of the tractor, which is ultimately going to blow the seed from the tank towards our row units. When we think about our CCS hoses plugging, it could be one of many different things. There are crop, different crop types that are permitted to work with CCS and ones that aren't. A common crop that we plant that comes to mind that may have a difficulty being moved by air from our center fill tanks to the outside of our planters was when we talk about large kidney beans. So we would typically see a uh, three bushel hopper or 1.6 bushel hoppers being used to plant uh, big heavy edible beans. So we've talked about crops that are uh, permitted to work with our CCS. So we think about corn, we think about soybeans, we think about our smaller edible beans, right? Uh, another thing that could cause some plugging would be not enough seed lubricant. So what we suggest, especially if it's a brand new planter and there's never been any seed lubricant through the hoses, is dump a fair amount in the bottom of your CCS tanks. And all you're going to need to do to activate that blower fan to push that seed lubricant out through all the hoses is actually just lower the planter. Uh, your CCS fan is actually tied to a height sensor on your frame, so once it gets to a low enough point, it'll kick that fan on and blow that seed lubricant out through all your main hoses and into the row units uh, and even lubricate the area inside your, uh, your seed meters. Another thing that can play a part in our CCS hoses plugging is actually too much fan. We get it often enough that you would think, hey, my seed's not flowing to the row unit. Potentially, I need more air to push that crop out. When in fact, too much air could actually be causing a log jam. We could have a bundle of seed trapped in the tubes um, so uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you could actually have too much fan. A good way to know if you have a blockage, when the planter's unfolded, these will be much easier uh, to you know, come in contact with from the ground. But you can shake these and you'll hear a rattle. If there's air flow, there'll be seed flow. Uh, if there is no air flow, so say we've got a, a hose leak or a row unit's full and doesn't allow any more air into it, we won't have any seed in here. So one thing to note, airflow means seed flow. So another common question we get in the spring from our growers is why am I receiving a wheel speed air or a speed source air? When we talk about wheel speed air, what it could be is when we look back here on our planter, we have a, a motion speed sensor here. And if this sensor doesn't recognize that the planter isn't moving, then it won't plant. And what we can see sometimes in no-till conditions or trashy conditions, say a corn leaf or some trash can get bundled up in here and actually block the visibility of the sensor. So if you do have a planter wheel motion air, this would be a good spot to check. 
When we talk about a speed source error, typically that's a checkbox that was left unchecked or mischecked in the cab. The reason we have a speed source error come up is typically because our tractors actually used to have a radar. And when we plant now, we use a GPS, a simulated radar speed through the GPS beacon on the front of the tractor. The reason we use our receiver speed is that it can actually calculate slip where our radars weren't smart enough to calculate slip. So say you were traveling at five miles an hour, you got some slick conditions and it, your, your wheels were spinning, right? Say you were only actually traveling 4.7. That radar wasn't smart enough to do the slip calculation, tell the variable rate motors or the seed drives that they need to slow down so that you don't overpopulate. When we use our GPS receiver speed, it can calculate that slip and any speed changes in the tractor to ensure that we're going to hit the proper calculation, even if you aren't driving your desired speed. Question or comment three that we would typically get is why am I getting my row unit isn't planting air or uh, a comment being, you know, my row unit isn't planting, what, what could it be? So this is going to kind of piggyback onto our CCS discussion from before. We want to make sure that we are getting seed to the row unit. A good way to check that is, you know, we want to make sure that our delivery hose has good contact with our, our hopper. We can pop the top off the hopper, look inside the meter to see if seed has made it to the meter. If we've confirmed that seed is flowing through the tubes and have made it to the meter, we would next look at our vacuum. What can happen, often happens, you know, especially with the split row planter changing between corn and soybeans, is that our vacuum hose doesn't have a good seal or doesn't have a good sitting on our row unit. What can happen is if it's loose and you're bouncing through the field, it can pop off. Now you have no vacuum to keep your seat on the plate. Another thing we can check for is in any pinch points or areas where the, your hose might come in contact, right? We can run our hand along and listen for ear leaks or feel them out. We've got a good solid hose. We don't have any vacuum leaks. From the hose side of things, we can pop our row unit open and make sure that we're not losing vacuum through our meter seal. So uh, whether it's, you know, had fallen out, uh, it's got dried up and cracked, you know, improper care of this seal will lead to uh, a loss of vacuum and ultimately the row unit wouldn't plant. So another place we'd look is here on our seal. All right, so common question number four or comment number four would be, you know, why is my row unit overpopulating or underpopulating? So the previous question we had, my row unit's not working at all. We've identified that we've got seed coming to the mini hopper. We've checked our vacuum hoses. We've ensured that we've got vacuum going to the meter. So what can we do to figure out why we're overpopulating or underpopulating? So first off, we'll pop our meter open and take a look at our seed bowl. One thing to think about is if we don't have enough vacuum, right, we won't be able to hold seed into our bowl holes here. Ultimately, what's going to happen is these seeds will fill up the holes, they ride around the meter, and once they get to here, they get passed off to a brush belt or in a conventional situation, a seed tube, and it drops down into our seed trench. Opposite to that would be too much vacuum. And what we could see is that we would have a cluster of seeds or say maybe two, and we would be dropping double the amount of seeds, ultimately resulting in overpopulation, uh, you know, significantly off of your uh, population target. Now, we've popped this open, you know, we've taken a look, we did, we've identified if we have too much or too little vacuum, what other adjustments can we do if that doesn't fix our issue? So if we pop our seed bowl out, we can take a look in here at what we call our doubles eliminator. So for corn, we're gonna have two components. We're going to have this green rumble strip and it's bumpy. Opposite to this would be a yellow strip. We'd run it in edible beans or soybeans and it's actually smooth. But the idea of this bumper strip is to actually slow the seeds down from bouncing around in here, let them get picked up and caught onto our bowls. So we're kind of filtering the doubles as they go down. If we still have doubles once they reach up to here, we actually have this mechanism which would knock duplicate seeds out of the holes to ensure that we only have one seed 
per hole. For corn, we want it set to our middle notch here and adjust as needed. This should get you going with successful results, uh, but you know, different seed sizes or seed weights, ultimately, you know, we may need to see an adjustment done with that. They're just little pinch clips and you can move it up or down. Alrighty, so our fifth uh, comment or concern that we get towards the end of the season would be, hey, I need a reminder on crop changeover. I know there's components in the cab I need to change over in the display, and there's physical components out on the meter. Uh, can you just run me through it quickly? So when we're changing from corn to soybeans or corn to edible beans, the first thing that we'd want to think about here is changing out our corn bowl. Not to be confused with our soybean bowl as they look very similar, our corn bowl has 32 holes, our soybean bowls have 64 holes. So they look very similar uh, and the holes have the same spacing actually, but our corn ones are half filled in. If we tried to seed soybeans with this, ultimately we'd end up with about half the rate and our meters would be really spinning quickly uh, to try and achieve that population because there's half the amount of opportunity to hold seed. So what we could do, so we'll pop out our corn bowl. And the next thing we'd look at in here is our rumble strip. So in corn, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to slow down the seed bouncing around, allow it to get caught by the, uh, the, the seed bowl. In soybeans, we actually wanna pop this out and we put in a smooth yellow strip. Now those three prongs on the back of the meter and you can pop this out and pop your yellow one in. One of the last adjustments we would make inside our exact emerge bowl is our doubles eliminator. So as we discussed before, we'd have this set to our middle mark for corn and in soybeans, we actually want to keep it out of the way. We're not so worried about knocking doubles off in soybeans. Typically we're seeding at such a high rate anyways. Alrighty, so a couple final thoughts. We've discussed our physical adjustments on the planter outside. When we're talking about in the cab, if you have a Seed Star 2 or a Seed Star XP planter, we want to make sure we go into our seed setup and change our rows from planting to say 16 to 32 or 12 to 24 if you have a split row planter and you're changing to soybeans. The nice thing about doing it uh, in a Seed Star 4 planter or a newer planter such as this um, is that it, it's simply easier, we change our crop type, we check a box, and the, the in-cab portion uh, is complete. So those are our top five customer calls we receive in the spring. Uh, hopefully what we discussed today will help you guys in getting prepped for planting corn and changing over to soybeans. And if it doesn't and you have more questions, of course, we're always here for a call to uh, support and have a chat. <music>